Um, and, and so for that reason, that's why I think I like the the SS31 a little bit better is because uh, because it improves your mitochondria, which is needed for everything. It generally improves everything. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, so it's great to uh, have you back on the podcast again. It feels like quite a while. So yeah, we've got quite a few topics to dive into. So what's your opinion on the, the mitochondrial peptides? I know you're a big fan of SS31. And then obviously, what else have you got? Motsi and um, what's the other one? Human in as well. And then we were talking previously about uh, cycling or like doing uh, uh, diabetic drugs over the whole, like whether you do them over the whole year. And then that, cause that got me thinking, you know, with these mitochondrial peptides, obviously they help with insulin sensitivity. So, I mean, uh, do, you, do you think um, cycling different mitochondrial peptides through the year, like doing your, your SS31 and then MOTSI one time of the year, that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, again, I think it depends on the mechanism of the product. Um, and probably, you know, with the different mechanisms of the SS31 versus the, the MOTC, I think that um, uh, I might have different recommendations. You know, with the, um, with the SS31, for instance, you know, its mechanism of action is to stabilize cardiolipin, right? That, that protein within the inner mitochondrial mm -hmm. membrane. Um, which we know oxidizes with age. And so, you know, for someone with SS31, they're probably going to get much less benefit if they're younger um, than if they're older and have more oxidized cardiolipin. Um, but one of the other things we know is that that, um, you know, helping helping uh, stabilize cardiolipin to, to curb those internal membrane structures is not something that that keeps happening, right? It, you know, once once you use it and once it goes away, then your cardiolipin will start to uh, uh, you know oxidize again and, and obviously mm. relax. And so I think that the SS thirty one is one of those that I wouldn't recommend cycling on. Um, you know, I think that uh, that that it is one that you can have consistent benefit with um, later in life. And so I think that. Uh, the, the the exception might be that the Mot the Mot C you know which is really you know uh, having um, the effect of increasing AMP kinase which I think we already talked about earlier is hmm. you might not always want to be that proliferative you know um, and and telling your mitochondria to you know start producing and start going to overdrive that might not always be the best signal you might want to again tamper that with you know the mTOR inhibition um, and and so I think that that one I can see more of a rationale for cycling for um, and and I again I see this in a lot of our physicians too you know you always uh, a lot of this data that we're looking at is all about lifespan right the total mm -hmm. and you know length of longevity but I think that everyone knows that that's not always the, the sole end goal right we have the six mm -hmm. span we have health span and I know we want to compress six span you know lengthen health span and so for a lot of people they um, a lot of this proliferative things things like you know larger anabolic cycles as it relates to hormones, um, you know, things like growth hormone, right, that might help, you know, people lose weight or, you know, help them sleep or, uh, you know, help them repair and recover from injury. Some of those might be, I would say, uh, you know, counterintuitive for optimal lifespan. That's why we know IGF-1, you know, after growth hormone stimulation is generally correlated with lower lifespans. But at the mm -hmm. same time, it can have great impacts on health span and, and some of these other physiological functions of aging. And so I think that there and is then, probably... I guess quality of life as well if you suppress that too much then you're not going to feel great are you and... exactly and so i think that there's a uh, you know there's there's definitely a balance um and i think mm. that so i think i think that, that there absolutely is probably a cycle there right um you know it's, i see right now a lot of the physicians that we work with doing sort of nine months um more inhibitory right where they're inhibiting mTOR they're you know doing caloric restriction and then they might go a little bit more pro-growth uh, within three months. And there they might do some growth hormone secretagogues. They, they might stop the rapamycin. They might, um, you know, uh, do some of those other things to, to sort of stimulate growth, you know, helping trying to improve muscle mass and, and all those, uh, you know, physiological markers of aging. Um, and then they might go back off again for nine months. And so I think that there's certainly probably a mixture of the two. Hmm. And, uh, but I'm not sure where that is yet, but I, I think that, uh, um, a th you know, three month on nine month is off is generally what I see most. Okay. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Cause that, that was kind of leads me on to what I was talking about before, you know, doing it, should you mm -hmm. do it periodically for the year of like a, you know, like a one month of slight anabolism and then go back mm -hmm. into, uh, you know, uh, calorie restriction. I don't know, but yeah, I guess there's different theories, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we just don't know yet, but I think mm -hmm. that, um, 
I, but again, I, I think we know that, that it's it's important um, to balance lifespan and health span. I think that no mm-hmm. one wants to live a long life without, uh, uh, you know, an effective health span. Um, and, uh, and and for that, you might need more proliferative growth, more protection um, than you're, you're getting on those other years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so talking about mm-hmm. mitochondria. So, um, yeah, so I, mean, I guess with all these things, though, so if you're in a worse state of health, either you're older or you're carrying significant amounts of body fat, that kind of thing, then that'd be mm-hmm. more, you'd notice more of a benefit from any of these mitochondria derived peptides. Yeah, I think the, the worst shape your mitochondria are in generally, uh, you know, for the MOTC, I think it's sort of metabolic health. Um, but mm. for the uh, for the SS31, I think it's just mitochondria health in general. How efficient are your mitochondria at being able to produce energy and to, you know, not have a lot of oxidative stress reactions? Um, and, and so for that reason, that's why I think I like the the SS31 a little bit better is because uh, because it improves your mitochondria, which is needed for everything. It generally improves everything. Um, if you look at all the mm. studies, it's not just about you know fat loss or performance. It's about um, you know improving you know uh, a repair and recovery from you know like in in your tendons and ligaments. It's about your mm. brain health. It's about your metabolic health. It's about mm. you know all of these yeah, different outcomes. So it's really really regenerative <laughs> for the heart, isn't it? SS31. Blue, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, and that's, I think, the indication that they had sort of chosen, uh, you know, at least first is to help with, uh, you know, some of those other sort of specific disease things. But I think, uh, you know, uh, whenever it gets approved, if it gets approved, I think yeah. that uh, the off label indication will be just as important. Hmm. And then do you think just doing it as a like a preventative thing, maybe if you hit, say, the age of 40 years old, just to, you know, for them to aid the mitochondria? Absolutely. I, I yeah. think that, uh, again, one of the other big takeaways, I think, from this GRC conference is just how important, you know, the mitochondria are, are in all of this. Um, and from a mechanism of action standpoint, you know, I think we, we had previously even talked about, you know, spermidine and, and, you know, some of the things we're seeing with autophagy, right? Uh, just how important it is mm-hmm. to clean up those cells so that they don't produce, you know, maybe accumulate toxic proteins, which then hurt the mitochondria, which then hurt everything. Um, and I think that the importance of the mitochondria just cannot be uh, understated um, from a longevity mechanism standpoint. Mm-hmm. Anything that makes your mitochondria function better, I think, is, is a great product for longevity. Okay. I mean, do you have uh, quite a mitochondrial uh, assistance kind of diet where you do you have a lot of foods that really help like raw cacao or that kind of thing yeah so so you know i i traditionally don't i think i tend to be more um uh sort of i would say uh I would say whole, yeah, using supplements mainly like, you know, maybe okay. P- PQQ, yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. know, some of those other things. Um, but but definitely, you know, the SS31 is one of those things I put on my list, especially as I get older. Um, you know, I think uh, trying to, to improve that, you know, I think that a lot of the specific antioxidant research is, is you know, mixed as well, right? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. some of it may be too many antioxidants might have a negative effect. Um, and, and so I think that, um, you know, whenever I think about the mitochondria health, I, I really think about it through a lens of you know generally a lot of those lifestyle behaviors like exercise which are so important for for healthy mitochondria Mm, yeah yeah for sure